the diaspora of the 12 tribes. Now, um, we'll start off with Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, as we always do. If you have the scriptures, turn to Colossians, the third chapter, verse 17. Let's go. Read. The book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, Yahweh Shai, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Right. Everything is through our Father and the Son of the Father, which is Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Now, I like to address brothers and sisters who are watching this. Some brothers will be like, well, y'all just keep going through the books. Right? Y'all keep going through the books, but y'all don't go through the Bible. Well, if you know us, we've been going through the Bible since... The early 2000s. You say, we ain't never left the Bible. We're just showing you according to your history. Your history is throughout all these books. How can you not understand that? I got to address this because I've heard some brothers talk about, well, all they do is go through books since we've been making these videos. You know, obviously you haven't been watching this because this is what we do. We get into the books of the history because how can our people read this Bible? Of course, they don't see themselves in it, but how can they prove to their family members that we are the Israelites pertaining to what the so-called white man has written. His own books proving that we are the Israelites. We got to show it in the books. Okay? Don't be ignorant of the fact that, that we have these, have these resources to bring them out. We love the scriptures. We're always breaking down the scriptures with precept upon precept. The understanding of that. We break down the Bible. But we also have to give you the history of our forefathers in the last 2,000 years where they are. And it's in the books. Okay? So, in order to get this understanding, you got to first understand we have to keep the law, statutes, and commandments to understand the wisdom of the Most High in order to go through books like this. Okay? Um, give me, give me um, Wisdom of Solomon in our park of it. And let's go to chapter 6. And let's go to verse 20. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 20. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. Uh -huh. If your delight be in the thrones, uh, uh, be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom, that you may reign forevermore. If you want to be called kings and priests in the new kingdom, guess what? You got to understand wisdom. Right? You want to get to the kingdom, understand wisdom. Wisdom is also knowing things of the earth. You know, how do we know who Esau is? Based on the tribulations that he brings on our people. Based on us going on slave ships. Coming into this place called America. Based on the American Indians going into captivity. On slave ships and being destroyed. You know, you got to go through history books in order to get some kind of wisdom. When you sit down and talk to your children, yes, we know we're going to go through the scriptures. But you also have to tell them what went down during these thousand year eras. You gotta, you gotta be, you gotta have that kind of wisdom to explain. Okay, read on. Verse twenty-two. Verse twenty-two. Oh, six and twenty-two. Mm -hmm. Verse twenty-two. As for wisdom. What she is and how she came up, I will tell you, and I will not hide mysteries from you, uh -huh. but will seek her out from the beginning of her nativity. All right, we got to search for wisdom from the beginning, right? The history of our forefathers and the history of our forefathers in the last 2,000 years. Come on. And bring the knowledge of her into life. That's what we're doing. The Most High is releasing all this information so we can get this information now and bring it to life. This is why a lot of y'all brothers... Uh, that, that watch videos don't understand why some brothers who get you know in depth with certain things don't get a lot of views because brothers don't have patience to sit and watch things but that's another form of wisdom okay go ahead and will not pass over the truth uh -huh. keep going neither will I go with consuming envy right. for such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom right. you can't be jealous about brothers going through different things breaking stuff down because this is just another form of wisdom. This is when you read Isaiah, it talks about the different levels of spirits. Some brothers have spirits to do this, some brothers have spirits to do that. It's just another form of a spirit that the most high has. Go ahead. 
But the most tool of the wise is the welfare of the world. The welfare of the world of Israel. Come on. And a wise king is the upholding of the people. Right. So we're all going to be kings. So we have to learn how to uphold our own people and teach them about all the heretics, all the enemies that came amongst us. Right. We have to teach them about everything that's happened to us based on history. Come on. Receive therefore instructions through my words, and it shall do you good. It shall do you good. So Solomon was the wisest man on earth. Guess what? He knew about everything. He knew about how the plants grew. He knew about how the sun and the moon circulated, the stars. He knew all that stuff. So we, in tune, have to be the same way. If we're going to be called kings by the Hamashiach, I was shot. Let's go to Sirach chapter 12, verse 10. Because you can't ask Esau about your heritage. Esau's not going to tell you. Esau's just going to say you're an African. He's just going to say you're a black man. He ain't going to tell you where you came from. Why would, he, why would a thief give you that honor? He's a thief. Come on, read that. Ecclesiastic Cus, chapter 12, verse 10. Uh -huh. Never trust thine enemy. The scriptures say you never trust thy enemy. And who are the enemies of Israel? When you read Psalms 83... Those are the enemies of Israel, all other nations. Come on. For like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. Uh -huh. he, though he humble himself and go crouching, take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether so wiped he, away. So he said, beware of him. Don't just sit and trust this guy. You look at his forefathers, you know how they didn't tra treat, treated your forefathers. Trickery. They didn't hung your forefathers. Trickery. They did all this thing. You want to sit there and believe them? Everything they tell you? You know? Come on. Set him not by thee, lest he have overthrown thee. Lest when he... No, lest when he overthrown thee, uh -huh. he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. Uh-huh. And thou at the last remember my words and be pricked therewith. Right, so he says, Don't this is why we can't let the heathen come into the presence of the Israelites. Because what? They'll take precedence over us. This is what's going on in the Christian churches. Right? They try to jump over Israel. You can't allow these people to jump over Israel. The Most High has already set this in place. The children of Israel has to wake up first. Go ahead. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent, or any as such that come nigh wild beasts? You can't trust him. And if you ask him about your heritage, he is not going to tell you. You have to do the search. Give me Sarah 37, verse 10, and we'll get into the study. You have to do your own research. That's what Job says. Do the search of your own fathers. Do that research. No, search out the matter. Ecclesiasticus chapter 37, verse 10. Uh -huh. Consult not with one that suspecteth thee, and hide uh, and hide thy counsel from as such as envy thee. Uh -huh. Neither consult with a woman touching of her of whom she is jealous. Right, so this is getting into breakdowns of how the Most High wants us to conduct ourselves in today's time. But this is also going into the way of the enemy, too. Come on, read. Neither would they coward in the matters of war, uh -huh. nor with the merchant concerning exchange, nor with a buyer or selling mm -hmm. of selling, nor with an envious man of thankfulness. Right. How are you gonna tell the slave owner that just bought you? Well, how much did you buy me for? You know, can I buy my freedom from you based on that? They don't want to hear that, they just bought you. Right? So it's the same thing with our enemies. We have to understand that uh, why would they tell us the truth about who we are? Why would they do that? They have no reason. They, do you, they don't want you to get above them by knowing who you are. Come on. Nor with an unmerciful man touching kindness. Uh -huh. you, Nor, can't, you can't say that he died for all the sins of Israel. Because why would he why would he set up these churches right now? They're set up all these churches. All the stuff their forefathers have did, they want to teach us the Bible. You let the enemy come in and teach you the scriptures. You gotta stop them. Right there. You gotta stop them. They're not bringing nothing up about what their forefathers did. All they want to talk about is peace. Peace, peace, peace. They don't pollute us. Brothers trying to get jobs, can't get jobs. Brothers trying to get to college. They keep upping the price on the college tuition. Brothers trying to buy houses. You can't buy houses because you don't fit the category. You know, your credit is too low. 
Meanwhile, they're creating all these extra little, uh, you know, programs for their own people. And by the time you find out about those programs, guess what? It's too late. The door's about to shut. What are they doing that's different from us? You know what I mean? That's systematic. It's systematic. Now, brothers be like, oh, you can't blame the white man. Well, something's going on. And we're not included. All right, come on. Nor with the slothful for any work, mm -hmm. nor with the hireling for a year of finishing work, nor with an idle servant of much business, hearken not unto these in any matter of counsel. Mm -hmm. Come on. But be continually with a godly man. Be continually with a what? With a godly man. Uh -huh. Come on. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments Whom of the thou Lord. Thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Most High. Come on. Whose mind is according to thy mind, and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. Right, so the Most High is saying, these are the only people that are going to sorrow with you. Those who love the Most High. Those who keep the commandments. These are the only people that try to help you. That's it. Now you can probably run to the enemy and try to seek help, but I'm sure there's some statistics in there. There's some money in there, some kind of way where he's going to get paid for helping you. You just ain't going to just help. There's something involved. You know what I mean? And granted, the most I could use an enemy to help you. But there's always a catch. There's always a catch. All right, come on. And let counsel of thy own heart stand. Therefore is no is no man faithful unto thee than it. Mm -hmm. For a man's mind is sometimes wont to tell him more than seven watchmen mm -hmm. that sit above in a high tower. Right, sometimes your mind run wild and you don't want to listen to what the Most High says. Come on. And above all this, pray to the Most High that he will direct thy way in truth. And so this is where we come to today. We have to understand that the Most High is blessing us. And when we present this history, this history is for us. We have done the research for our people. Okay? No one else has done this research. All these books have been written. How come nobody's told us about who we are as a people? No one has come out there. Even when the Afrocentric brothers put on all those uh, different types of garments. What do you call those garments? Daishikis. And as a white man ever came out and says, yeah, you're right, you are Egyptian. They ain't never said that. And they came out and said, you're right, you're from the uh, the Ethiopians. You guys are a great race. They ain't never said that. They always try to come back with you saying, no, the Greeks, we controlled that. No, the Greeks were the first civilization. They always say that. All right? So with that said, let's get into the, into the research today and the study of the scripts. So the first book we're going to go into today is Blacks in the Dutch World. Blacks in the Dutch world. And you all heard, heard of Josephus before, right? Josephus was a philosopher. He was also a... Uh, uh, first century historian. Yeah, he was a first century historian. Thank you, brother. And, and uh, let's see, because most people, when they hear Josephus, they think of him of being a Caucasian man. And because of that, they think that all the Israelites are Caucasian people. But let's... Look at Josephus, who was a man of color, and let's look at his research, and let's see what he said. Go to uh, page 142. Page 142. And read that paragraph that's highlighted, starting from the title. The title, Blacks in the Dutch World. Who was the author? By Alison Blakely. Okay. Go ahead. Popular, popularization. Stop right there. First and foremost, there was brothers. There was Moors, blacks in the land of, of the Dutch. They were in Spain. They were in Portugal. Guess what? They were Israelites. They were Israelites. A lot of them flooded over from Rome when they were when they were fighting in the Colosseums and families left and went that way too. They went to Spain, Portugal, uh, Dutch, uh, you know, uh, Britain, all those areas. All right, come on. Popularization and standardization, as was the cause with painting. The earliest widely distributed prints and illustrations were those related to religion. A popular illustrated biblical history was that of Flavius Josephus. Okay, so Flavius Josephus is about to present something because during that time, can you grab that book real quick? The bottom, the unknown catacombs. Now he said that with religion, which was a big thing in those days, people
people were able to understand the Bible based on uh, visual images. Now, when you look at this book, this is a catacombs. This is in Rome. Okay, let me find a page. This is in Rome. Okay? So I've been to the catacombs before. Catacombs is like a giant. Y'all ever seen like an ant maze? Catacombs are set up like that. They're up under the cities. So on these walls, these people, who are the so-called Christians, who are getting killed in these coliseums, were drawn on a wall, the saints of, of the Bible. Now, these are the saints of the Bible. These are black men. These are on the walls. Okay? You see that? Alright. So you have on here, it says, yeah, it says Daniel. It says Moses putting off his shoes. It's a black image. Job and his wife is below it. Black images. Okay? And this ain't from fate because the wall is white. Okay? His brother be like, oh, well, it's fate. No, it ain't fate. You know what I mean? Here's some more pictures, images. These are black men. Okay? Let me show you a real good one. So they took them pictures before it was whitewashed. They start painting them white. Right. Well, they tell you don't go in there with your camera taking pictures because they said that the brightness will take off the. Uh, can, can we first? Can we first establish that this is a, a, a catacomb? So that means we, we own the catacomb. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Let's let's dwell on that first. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Then let's get to the images on that because this ain't one of this is just one of the places that we had. Just one. If y'all look at this, this is interesting because this is like right above the door. This little man has an afro. You see that? Can you see that? Yeah, I got that. Yeah, a little afro. To show you that our people, they were trying to send messages to us, trying to show us, look, our people were the Israelites. Um, I'm looking for the one with Samson. This is Joseph. Samson is a real clear cut. I'm just trying to find it. It's a real big image. This is Daniel. We got a lot of Daniel. We know Daniel is black. He is the word the back. Of course, this is the Egyptians and the Israelites fleeing. Of course, you see the walls tearing up. The Israelites on one side, the Egyptians on the other, black and black. That's why Moses was able to pass as an Egyptian. Right. So we're showing the visual images of our forefathers during the first, second, third century when they were hiding from the world. They went down in the catacombs to hide. Okay, because they were killing. This is how they were able to worship. They couldn't worship out in the open because they were killing Israelites. So that's why they would call themselves Christians. Okay? Read that what we were reading right there. Finish it up about Flavius Josephus. Was, was that of Flavius Josephus, which was available in German and Dutch. Which available in Germany? And Dutch, come on. It featured illustrations of distinctively black figures for the story of Moses and the Egyptians. Y'all hear that? Distinctly black figures for the story of who? Of Moses and the Egyptians. And the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is Josephus, the world-renowned, famous historian. He's saying that Moses was a black man. Okay. He's saying the Egyptians were black people. Mm -hmm. This is nothing new. We already knew this. We already, all of us already knew this, but it's also in the books. So why are they continually pushing forth these movies every year, these religious movies, and they got the book of Exodus, white man. Uh, they got Jesus Christ, white man. They got, uh, they just came out with a movie, Apostle, Apostle uh, Paul, white man. But he was also called the Egyptian. Samson. Samson. Of course, they just redid that because in the last one, that they had in the last movie prior, it was a black man with dreads. They changed it again. Now it's that was white man. You know, they gotta they gotta be with you again. They're like, oh no, we can't give them that much information. We gotta make them white again. And if it's somebody black playing playing one of those parts, it's a big uproar. Oh, it's a big uproar all over. Even in the land of Jerusalem, there's uproar. It's crazy. Right. So here we got Josephus calling the Israelites black. Let's go to the Bible. Let's find out why is he saying that. Let's go to Exodus chapter 4. The Bible proves that. Exodus chapter 4. And start at verse 1. 
Exodus chapter 4 verse 1. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For Moses, they, Moses was scared. He was scared he had to go back to the land of Egypt to tell his brothers. Look, the most I spoke to him. Go ahead. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is it that in thine hand? Jump it down, because it's talking about the staff that's going to turn into a snake. We don't want that part. That's the first sign. Let's look at the second sign. Let's go to verse 6. Verse 6. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. All right, so he took his hand out. Before it had color, he took it out. Now it's leprous as snow. Just to paint the image, snow is white. Okay? So what was it before he put his hand in his bosom? It had to be black. black. Come on. And he said, put thy hand into thy bosom again. And he said, and he put his hand in his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. As his other flesh. So here's Moses. This is the one thing that the Ten Commandments that come on every year do not show. <laughs> Why don't they show the second sign? They show the first sign and they show the third sign. But they never show the second sign. The third sign was turn the water into blood. Obey the Lord, or he will raise his hand against the waters of the river. I have come to bless the waters. You have come to curse them. We will learn if a god of shepherds is stronger than the gods of Pharaoh. Water of life, give drink to the desert, and make green the meadow. Aaron. Stretch out my staff against the waters. Look! Look! There! Where he struck the river! He, he bleeds! The water turns to blood! How can you just totally skip over the second one? Charlton Heston, Ten Commandments. They just totally skipped over that part. Huh? Show Moses was black. Exactly. So I mean that's you know that's a riddle in itself, but it's not a riddle anymore. Read verse 8. Verse 8, and it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign. Of the first sign, which was a staff to turn to a snake, come on. That they will believe the voice of the latter sign. That they sign. will believe the voice of the latter sign, the second sign. That's just as important as the first one, and they left it out of the movie. Okay? So this is the bewoving or bewitching of the whole world. Everybody thinks he was a white man. Okay? And I'm saying white so you can understand instead of Caucasian. This is what it was. Charlton Heston was a so-called white man. So you need to know, know that. Alright? So did you finish reading this from here? No, I wasn't done. Okay, we finish reading that. Another, another biblical event with a black occasionally illustrated in various forms of the rescue of the prophet Jeremiah from the dungeon by the Ethiopian eunuch Abed-Malek. He is described in one print of this theme, uh, captioned in Old Dutch as a Moor man. Right, as a Mormon. So Jeremiah was considered a Moor, which was a black man. Okay, this is not talking. See, y'all heard the Ethiopian unit. Y'all automatically thought about Paul in the book of Acts. Most brothers, that's what they mind of. But no, this is talking about Jeremiah. Because if you read the story of Jeremiah, he's trying to tell his people and warn them about, you know, Destruction is coming, and they threw him in jail a couple of times. And the first time, this Ethiopian helped him get out of jail. So it's telling you right there, Jeremiah was a black man too. He said, uh, my people are black into the ground, right? All right, let's go to the Encyclopedia of the Jewish Diaspora. You can put that one up. Um, volume 2. So the brother found Samson in here. Hold on. So there's a sacrifice of Isaac on the top, black man. Mm. And here's Samson. Look how black Samson is. 
This is on the walls in Rome today. They'll never tell you about this. Neither will they tell you about this in the Christian church. You show this in the Christian church, they be thinking that you just drew this. Can you go see that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, when I went, they blocked off a lot of the catacombs. I don't know why. <laughs> okay? They blocked off. And the ones that we went through was actually so dark, you couldn't see nothing. And you can't take no pictures. Can't take no pictures. Mm. Come on. No telling what they done did. <laughs> that book is hella expensive, right? They, they, yeah. they, 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 want, the book. they want you to they let it be a tourist attraction to take your money, but you can't take no pictures, though. Mm -hmm. They're going to use it for a purpose. They got to use it for a purpose. They can get money out of it. Yeah. They don't I, want you taking them from it. I went there in, um, I believe it was 1999. I went there. And I didn't. I didn't come into the truth until 2002. So I didn't know what to look for when I went. But I couldn't understand why they wouldn't let us take pictures and look on the wall. You know, I, I didn't understand that part. And there was paintings, but I didn't look the way I should have looked. You know, had I been in the truth, I would have saw, I would have been looking for that stuff. Why did you go there? I, went there? I was looking for my history, man. I was trying to find out who I was, man. I didn't go there to look for, uh, you know, to be taking some joyous vacation. I went there to see where my history was. And I got sick the first day I got to Rome. I knew something right. My stomach was just turning inside out, man. So it was just, it, and it was because I saw all the stolen artifacts. So you went to Rome to look for your history. Most brothers go to Africa. Well, that, that was second. Okay. I wanted to go there first. So I went there first. And when I got there, because you know, they said that's where the Paul and all, something was leading me there. So I went there, and what I saw was stolen, uh, what do you call those? Uh, artifacts. Uh, not just artifacts, but the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The obelisks. Obelisks. Yeah, the obelisks. What's that? That's uh, in Ethiopia and Egypt, when someone would die, a king would die, they would put a giant pillar, like at the, um, in Washington, D.C. at the, uh, what do you call that? Monument. Yeah, what's the name of it? The Pentagon. Oh. You know how they got the tall... Statue. Yeah. Well, that's the sign of a, a a great chief that may have died, a great pharaoh or a king, the oldest. That's like you go to a cemetery, you see those in the cemetery, right? The the hedge. Yeah, yeah. That's basically a hedge, showing the power. The bigger it is, the more the power is, and so that's what that represents, power. So when I got there, and they were like, "Oh yeah, they took this from Egypt. Oh yeah, they took this from Ethiopia," and I was sitting there like. Why are they taking all this stuff? I couldn't understand it. You know, my mind was processing because I was reading a lot of books, but I couldn't, you know, and then when I went to, to Africa, I saw what it meant. Now, I'm going to tell you what the Ethiopian told me. He said because of the ark was in Axum, he said, how do you think that these pillars got there? How do you think we was able to stand them up? He said it was the ark of the covenant. <laughs> you know, because the ark of the covenant is supposed to be uh, very powerful. You know, it's the most high. Can you touch that? But you can't touch it, man. The most I tells you in the book of Jeremiah that it won't be found until the tribes assemble themselves back together in the last days. So it was probably just a replica. I didn't see anything as far as the art goes, but they were just kind of bragging and boasting how the, you know, one rumor starts another one. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, it becomes word. Word is bond, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why you got to do your research, too. This is the word of the Lord of hosts. I took you from the pastures and from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone and have destroyed all the enemies in your path. I will make you a great name among the great ones of the earth. I will assign a place for my people in Israel. There I will plant them and they shall dwell in their own land. 